that, that's amazing. Um, I can't tell you enough about how, how, how exciting it was to be a part of that. Uh, as a first time head coach, uh, to, that was my first uh, end of the game winning field goal and score and all that stuff. So that was really exciting to me. Uh, I'm kind of at a loss for words, really. Um, Coach Martz, uh, I told him at the end of the game there that they've got a heck of a ball club. And uh, we knew it coming in. Um, they've got skill positions that, um, that, that really challenged us. Uh, the defense is fast and aggressive and tough and very well coached by Coach Marmee. And um, it was a heck of a ball game. It was, uh, it was fantastic to, to be able to be a part of it. And fortunately, we came out on the, on the winning edge, on the winning side of it. Uh, the injury update, uh, we got uh, Brandon Green, our offensive tackle, uh, hurt his knee. Um, I saw him walking around in there. We'll give you an update as the week goes along. And uh, Ryan White, defensive back, uh, has, a, has an ankle. And um, again, we'll, we'll update you as, as the week goes along. Um, I thought we did a really nice job in our vertical passing game. We've been talking about, you know, getting some explosive plays. And uh, finally, we got, we got some of them. You know, uh, did a fantastic job with Damian Washington, having an 83-yarder and a 23-yarder. Uh, that was fantastic. And I knew he had it in him, and uh, I'm just happy that it happened tonight. And uh, Trent, of course, scored another two touchdowns. I see they call him the rogue of the end zone, or the red zone. And uh, he, did, he did a fantastic job. He's a very powerful runner, and I'm, I'm glad we have him. Uh, of course, Damian scored twice, and Trent scored twice. And we had two interceptions. You know, uh, it's come down to, when you go back and look at our games, um, typically, when we when we win the turnover margin, we, we have a pretty good chance of winning. And fortunately for us, the, the two of our defensive backs, uh, Jamar Summers and Bradley Sill, had a, had interceptions, and those were really nice. And our run defense uh, showed up tonight, and so that was a, a credit to uh, our defensive coaching staff and our players. Uh, they did a fantastic job getting ready for the, the run game. And I think I don't know if offhand if we held them under 100 yards rushing, but uh, this might be the only team that we did. So. Okay. Open up for questions. Up front. Coach, uh, yes. your early wins, like a lot of them were predicated on A little defense. bit louder, please. Your, your wins early in the season were, a lot of them were predicated on your defense. You talk about having to be in a shootout tonight and your offense having to carry a lot of that load. Oh, yeah, they, they, they did. Uh, I don't, I think this is the most number of points we scored, though. I think we scored 26 in the first game against Memphis and tonight 32. Uh, they do a fantastic job. Uh, I know you're probably going to ask about the quarterback situation, and, and rightfully so. Uh, Keith got hit in the mouth early in the game, got hit in the face and had a little bloody lip, and uh, Luis went in, and the offense seemed to be rolling. And uh, we, we changed the headset communicator, and I just didn't want to change it back. Luis had the thing rolling pretty good, and we were moving the ball, and uh, he did throw an interception. He did throw the, you know, a couple of ill-advised passes, but... It seemed to be it seemed to be working, and we got some points out of it. So I just went ahead and went with the hot hand and went with the with Luis. We can win with either, and I'm I'm really thrilled that we have that situation. Uh, yeah, coach. In the uh, first half, you we were working underneath the uh, the, the linebackers really hard and heavy with your running backs underneath. And then all of a sudden, you decided to open it up and start <laughs> going downfield on the outside. Yeah. Did you think that was going to be possible before you came into the game? And yes. why did you decide to pull that trigger? Yeah, we watched a lot of video, and uh, I can't remember who it was that they played against, but I had some success in uh, throwing the ball deep, and uh, we, it was part of a game plan. At the same time, you know, as the game evolves, uh, we have coaches in the press box that are looking at the same thing that we're all looking at, and uh, fortunately, we were able to make it happen. In the back, back here. If I had known they were going to be carrying him, I would have, I would have grabbed the leg. Um, I, I, he's one of the leaders on our team. You know, he's a he's a ten year NFL vet, and uh, I can't be happier with him. He's he's done a fantastic job of helping me at training camp with some of the younger guys and passing my message on. You know, and making sure that the players understand 
what it needs to look like in practice and what it needs to look like. You know, we're trying to emulate as much as we can, as close as we can, you know, the next level. And um, giving those guys that haven't been there an opportunity to feel what the practices should feel like, what the meeting schedule should feel like, what the training camp should feel like, he's done a fantastic job of helping guide those players, you know, that are whining and complaining about, oh, this is really hard and this is tough. And he's like, no, trust me, this is exactly what you need to know. And um, he's, been, he's been fantastic in the locker room. He's been fantastic in practice in the Birmingham area. He does a great job. Uh, and I, I couldn't be happier for him to come home to a place that he's worked at for a long time and uh, to, have, to have this happen, you know, this night uh, in that situation. It's fantastic. Well, it's a hard one to lose. Uh, obviously, we had a plenty of opportunities. We made a number of mistakes in there. But had we not just one play here or there, as always is the case, it seems, uh, we're going to end up a little bit different. I'm sure they feel the same way but uh, in terms of mistakes. But played hard, played hard, just too many errors. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, Tez, Don Tez Ford, I don't think it's a serious injury. Uh, we should get him back real soon. Hopefully, we will. Coach, what did you tell your players after a tough loss, especially being at home, and it being the first, time, the first loss at home? It's, uh, you know, I've always told them the only team that will beat this team is, is this team. And this is a perfect example of it. You know, the games that we've lost, we've done things in, in self inflicted wounds. Uh, it was a good football team we played, really good. Probably, I think this team and I think San Antonio, those are really good teams. Uh, not that the others aren't, but you know, th this is a real good team now that we play tonight. Um, I think that probably uh, the biggest issue was it just makes it harder, that's all. But like I told them, you know, I, it's the only way I know. Um, I've always taken a long, hard road, and nothing's ever been easy, so it's just one of those things. Yeah, Coach, Steve Sports Talk Line. The timing between Berkovich and the wide receivers the tight ends as well. Just seemed a little bit off. The early, the fade uh, in the end zone to the right was a little overthrown. We saw some passes across the middle. Yeah. They're always just a hand's breadth out. Yeah. Um, is it just one of those days? Or? He got to go a little fast. That, that, my, that's Mike. That's who he is. Um, when he's really on, he, he gets going fast. I got to slow him down. That's a, that's a good thing, by the way. Um, it's hard to speed guys up. Right. Those guys get sacked and you know, they wait for guys to come open. He's, he, he has always been really quick with the ball, and sometimes too quick. Um, he's getting it out fast now. So. He gets it out really fast. But there's some things where I just wish he'd hang on. And that's just play. He just got play. He's a good player. He's, he's going to be a real good player. But, you know, he's right now he's learning as we go. You know, that's it's one of the reasons, uh, uh, you know, the, he's just got to play. Coach, you guys are about to be on the road for three straight weeks. How do you guys prepare for that, especially not being away from home for so long? Well, I think it's, um, you know, we're in San Antonio for a month. So we've, you know, we've been away in, in a hotel environment like that and played and done all those things. So, and these guys are all, everybody on this team, no, nobody lives here, if that makes sense. So it's, we're kind of a transient culture, if you will, in this league, the players. So. I'm not sure playing on the road is that big of a deal. I've never really felt like it. And the other thing is, they still make a big deal out of it. It's just, it is what it is. You can't change it. So I just, I just have never worried about it, to be honest with you. Coach, can you talk a little bit about what Dantes gave you tonight before you ever one of those big plays? Well, Dantes was that guy that, that Torrey Holt, if you will, that guy at that position, the X position, that we could choreograph plays just for him. That you know, normal play can turn into a huge play, and he demonstrated that. Um, he made so many really good plays for us tonight, and unfortunately, he just couldn't stay in. But uh, that's who he is. He's going to have a heck of a career in the NFL. Somebody's going to get a really fine wide receiver. He's he's top notch. There's no question. Coach Jason Loft of East Coast Times. The last couple of weeks, it seems like the running game hasn't been as strong. And I know you had the injuries last week, and, and bringing Stanky into the pool. What do you think you can do to get the running game going at yeah, it's a, the last game we did? I'm not sure that they did a very good job calling the runs, to be honest with you. Um, I think we had, once we got going, we had a few runs that hit in there pretty good. I just felt like uh, we, we kind of need to get the ball in the air a little bit. Um, 
they're, they're really good against the run uh, tonight against us. We've got 30 front fields, big backers. Uh, I just felt like we protected the quarterback well, that we could get some, some plays down the field, particularly on first down. So uh, there were times, uh, there's a couple of plays I'd like to have back. Uh, we're going to run the ball instead of throwing it down there. And obviously, that's a coaching year. So, uh, like I said, there's a lot of things I'd like to take back. But. Coach, uh, considering how good both of these defenses are, maybe the two best defenses in the game, surprising how sort of free feeling this, this game was, all the points that were scored? Well, I think that um, we, we've always played such good run defense, and I think the people have felt that. Um, the players feel like that's they need to get the ball in the air and have some success doing that. So uh, I think that's uh, in the last few weeks anyway. That's kind of the course that everybody's taken. So what? We'll, we'll have to adjust all, all, as well defensively and go back to and figure out where we are with uh, our running game and some of the things on defense as well. Like I said, I think I just didn't do a very good job calling plays tonight. To be honest with you. Just, you know, I got going. I felt like a pretty good. Uh, got going there pretty good at times, but uh, there's some things I like to have back. Obviously, I think hurt us. Yeah, coach. When they didn't get home, uh, when you couldn't get home to their quarterback, they were exposing your defense on the deep outside in the second half. Um, what was causing that? I haven't seen that until now in this season. Now. Well, it's hard. To, it's hard to comment without looking at tape. Um, I watched it from the sideline, but you know, obviously, I'm trying to get ready for the next series. So uh, I, I just don't feel like I can comment on it uh, without looking at tape. And maybe on Wednesday, I have a better answer for you. But uh, they did a good job of protecting the quarterback. Anybody else? Yeah, just I don't know. They, you don't know until you go back and look. Sometimes the, if the blitzer isn't within the, a certain area, he doesn't make it down in there in time, that's an illegal blitz. Uh, there could have been something else that they picked up too that they felt was, was uh, different. I didn't see it. I, I didn't know what it was for, but we had uh, a couple of penalties in there like that that were significant penalties. Both, you know, we, we converted third down coming out of our own end zone early in the game, and then off, and we jumped. You know, we're late with a snap or whatever it is. So, like I told you in the very beginning, these are self-inflicted wounds. You know, these are things that we can control, and that's the focus uh, for us as coaches with this team. You know, we have to we have to clean all that up uh, for us to have a chance to win. Uh, Scored three touchdowns. Your family, your friends, and everybody. What was that feeling really like for you? Yeah, it's a great feeling, man. I'll tell you what. Uh, we've come home back to San Diego where I grew up, and then where I was born and and raised. It's a great feeling, man. Just to be able to, you know, do it in front of, you know, all my family and friends that really support me through everything, through, you know, through thick and thin, man. You know, uh, obviously I wasn't doing too good last week. You know, I wasn't playing well. Um, and for them to come out here and still support me, even though I wasn't supposed to play. Um, and for them to still come and support me, it's just, it's really big. Do you think this is going to be the, what turns the corner for you for the season? Uh, I mean, no, hard to say. You know, I, I did find a rhythm. And uh, competition brings the best out of you, I'll tell you what. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, I just found a rhythm and, and coach, you know, let me stay in and keep it going. So I'm, I'm thankful for that. A friend? Yeah, I see that. Thank you. Uh, man, you threw some fantastic touch on the team on the outside. I mean, that was, that was really nice. <laughs> to the middle of the field, not so much. What's the difference? With, is it the way you see it, or was it just pressure inside? Well, hard to tell. There's a lot of variables that come into play with that, you know. Receivers did a great job on the outside, getting open and you know getting over the top of people, making some good plays. Um, inside they did as well. Maybe I didn't, you know, maybe I had pressure, maybe I didn't see him. For whatever reason, there was a lot of plays that you know could have went either way. Um, but I, I don't think there's a preference for me. I would say you know I like throwing outside better versus inside. I don't have a preference at all. Um, just today, you know, it worked better outside. Oh, outside ball was working for Yeah. Luis, Jason with the East Village Times. It seems like when you guys get inside the red zone, you down the goal line, the Trent Richardson is just automatic. What's it like to know you can have that guy the ball and he's going to punch it in every time? Ah, man, Trey, man. Can't say enough good things about him. He's he's a great player, man. You know, he, he has a lot of power, as you can see. When we get down there, you know, we trust our own line to move the, move the line. And we look, we trust Trey 100% to get in the end zone. So, I mean, that's the game plan. That's been the game plan every week. It's not a secret. We do it every week. Um, we kind of just do it as, you know, we're going to do it. Somebody stop us. So, that's kind of how we take it.
So I got heckled by an Iron fan for waiting in the game today. Turns out it was your dad. <laughs> uh, first time with your family there. Uh, he already asked you, but talk about what, uh, what you might share with your family tonight, you know, if you get a chance to see it and, and what it means to them. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it's big time, man. Just. Like I said, you know, coming into this game, I told them, I said, don't, you know, uh, I'm not going to play this game. I'm not playing well right now. Uh, most likely not going to play. And they're like, it's okay. You know, we're going to support you through it. It doesn't matter. We're going to come. We're going to support you. Um, if you get in, you know, good. If not, it doesn't matter. We're going to support you guys and hope you guys win. Um, and for me to get in and be able to, you know, pull off a win as a team and, and come out with a win like this in front of my hometown, like, like I was telling them earlier, it's just a great feeling. Thank you. Luis, you spent some time with the Rams. So you, were, you were up at that level. Just to, to be at this level and to get Yeah, well, general opinion about this league, I love it. You know, it's, it's, it's developmental league, complementary league to the NFL. You know, a lot of guys, you know, like myself, maybe didn't get as many reps. Maybe we're fourth, third on the depth chart. Didn't get that many reps. Couldn't really develop for whatever reason or not, you know, got released. Um, but to be able to play and just get reps and just get better. This league is about improvement, in my opinion. Um, you got to get better every week and just, you know, as, as a team, individually. Um, and I feel like, you know, as a team, we're doing that and we're taking strides right now. Luis, it looked like you took a couple of shots throughout the game. How are you feeling right now uh, physically? Oh, I'm good. Uh, you know, I, I, you get hit every game. It's part, it's part of the game. Um, I'm going in, ice up a little bit, shower up, and uh, I'm sure I'll feel it tomorrow, but we'll be all right. Right here in the middle. Luis, hey, Kevin, Miguel is cuarto tonight. It's not tan dominant como el San Diego. Y recibir tantos golpes durante todo el partido. Es parte del juego, como le estaba diciendo. Es parte del juego. Este, mucha gente, you know, Pone mucho en, en, en la línea ofensiva, en receptores, en, en los running backs, en la defensa. Toma a todos, todos los 11 jugadores para, para hacer un éxito en una jugada. Y este, ahora poco a poco lo hicimos, hicimos drive y, y podemos ganar en el end zone. Gracias. No hesitate, guys. Come on. It's far away. Frustrations. Watch the back game, and you guys seem to be fingernails breadth away from sacking the quarterback on a regular basis. And you just. Um, I think mentally it's a uh, it's a grind. Um, anytime, first of all, anytime you lose, like it sucks, and then the fact that you're so close, it makes it even. At least me personally, and I would like to say I can speak for my brothers just because it's one band, one sound. And for us to be that close, I think it's as a collective unit, everybody was mad at themselves. Like I, it was guys that made plays and they were upset. And I'm like, yo, you balled out. You, you caught a pick. You did this. You did that. Oh, you had a, you had multiple sacks. You had pressures. And it's like, all right, cool. But as a whole, we all were sitting there saying what we can do to improve our game. And so even though it's a bad thing, it's also a blessing in disguise to have guys that's that hungry and want to improve their game and already know what they're going to do. So when we go back, we got to get back to the drawing board and go to work because if we that close then guess what that means that we can actually make the play so now we got to figure out why we didn't as a team leader are you trying to set the standard and show them how to use this definitely um i feel like all of us are to be honest with you like with me being in the league for um having six credit nfl season you got ron brook they got six credit nfl jew who's not with us right now but he's been a coach on the sidelines and aj tarpley who just came back that's killing frank that's killing so for us everybody with that being said everybody's constantly working and so you know it is what it is the iron ball sixty passing plays today how's that where you guys got some pass rush and how do you guys maintain pressure i'm sorry you got it just speak up for me a little bit. Uh, is it that mic? That mic a little muffled. Yeah. Birmingham called 60 passing plays today. 60? 60 passing plays. How do you guys keep maintaining pressure late in the game? Um, we gotta go. Um, we gotta go in there. and We gotta go hard. At the end of the day, that's what we do as a D line. We pride ourselves on that. We got some great run stoppers, but the one thing that we've been doing all year, and we gotta get back to it, is shutting down the run so we can get in these pass rushing opportunities. When you got great pass rushers, um, like Alex Berry. Uh, Miles was inactive tonight. He he constantly put pressure. You got Nephi, and then you got me. It's a four-man rotation, and keeping everybody fresh. Normally we can do that, and so um, for whatever reason, we were one step away. But you know, we we right there, and we're gonna get it back in there, and we're gonna get back to hunting like we normally do. Yes, sir.
Come on, man. Don't, don't be shy. Ask, ask the tough questions. I was like, ain't no point of being in here if we ain't going to get to the nitty gritty. Look, on the sidelines, okay, late in the game, this was a 180 from what happened last week. Mm-hmm. You guys came from behind and just what resulted in that drive? Because you had Well, we're constantly motivating each other. Um, we're constantly, once we get our adjustments and our plays or whatever, you know, after that, everybody, like most people, it might be a different time, but somebody's going out there. You got Ron Brooks who's a real big vocal leader, too. Myself, uh, Jalen, everybody's always constantly like, even when one of us is tired, they're coming over there, hey, let's get the offense up. When the offense is coming off the field and maybe they didn't score or something, but they drove it down there, it's, it's nice for us to say, hey, man, y'all doing y'all thing. They, y'all shooting yourself in the foot, so keep this up. And we're going to help y'all out. Just like when we ain't getting the pass rush that we need and it's a long drive and it's been a 10-play series, I can always count on Mike sitting right there. I start the quarterback right there as soon as I come off the field. Hey, DeMontre, y'all doing good, man. Keep it going. Uh, both of our starting tackles, they're constantly telling us. So I think we kind of all depend on each other. And Coach Mark has emphasized that with us. And so it translates over to the game. We, we'd be like, oh, we've been here before. Even today, we was like, hey, we've been here before. We did it last week. And at the end of the day, don't take nothing from Birmingham. They're a great team. They just came out with it. But the fact that we were able to fight back and tie it up and then, you know, get that lead, next time we just got to figure out how we can keep that lead and just stomp them out and go in and finish the game. Yes, sir. Montre, considering the quality of your defense and the quality of Birmingham's defense, are you surprised that there were 61 points scored in this game tonight? Is this not the way this game is you figured it would go? Um, to be honest with you, I knew that there was a possibility that the game could go this way, but do we plan on this ever happening? Hell no. We're, we're defense. Like, we pride ourselves on shutting people down, shutting them down, getting people leaving most pressure than quarterback hit. So, do we go in there expecting for a defense to, I mean, for offense to put up these numbers on us? No. Nah. And if, if somebody did, I'm insulted. And I know my brother's going to take that kindly. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's a talented offense. Don't take nothing away from them. They did what they need to do, came out with the win. You know, we, we did some good things, but we also shot ourselves in the foot. So now we're about to go back in there, learn, be a lot more hungry, and, you know, use this motivation. Is he playing against a running back like Trent Richardson any different than playing other running backs in this league? Yeah. Playing, playing against um, Trent Richardson is like playing against Trent Richardson, as simple as that. Playing against Zach Stacy is like playing against Zach Stacy. Those are two big name running backs, but you got Utah that got a great running back, a two headed uh, monster combo that a one two punch. So we got we got a lot of talented running backs. Even our, I feel like they feel the same way when they play our running backs. We got JG, um, we got Terrell uh, Washington is back there, and um, you know, with that being said, it's a lot of talented running backs now. Granted, with that being said, he, he is strong and he's big. So everybody got their strength. And you know, I felt like we I felt like we held them, but obviously we didn't hold them good enough because they won. So it is what it is. All right. Anything else? Last chance? Last chance. Speak now. Hold, fail, hold your peace. <laughs> good. Yeah, What's up? Oh, no, we're good. I'm out there. Hey, man, when you're, uh, when you're lining up against a team like this and you're winning, I felt like you asked that earlier and I didn't get to go in depth with that. But I'm sorry. But for us, we go in there and we make our adjustments. Um, we're constantly learning. And one thing we do when we come back in here, everybody focus, reset, is zero, zero. Took what we did good, but we also learned what we did bad. And Coach Marmy is a testament to him, uh, him having that wisdom. And then we got a lot of younger coaches that, you know, Coach Eric Allen, Coach Amy, that um, that see it from a former player's perspective and the coach's perspective. So that actually helps us to make those adjustments. And then they actually listen to us. So when we go in there, we make those adjustments. And nine times out of ten, we usually we do pretty good, if I do to say so myself. It's first loss at home. But we go in there, we make those adjustments, everybody come back out. Offense goes humming, we go humming. And I think that's been the if I feel safe to say that that's the cornerstone and if you have to define this team, is how we handle adversity. 
do we have a lot of potential? Yes. But we go out there, sometimes we shoot ourselves in the foot, sometimes we start off a little slow, but we always come back and we rise to the occasion. So we constantly making our adjustments and that's the only reason why, that's the only way that we're able to come back and win or put up even a fight with this team. Because if we wanted to, we could have laid down and you know, they got two talented quarterbacks. Both of them can run and both of them can throw. So they easily could have ran it up on us, but they didn't. We fought back, came back, and you know, and ain't no such thing as a, a moral victory, but we, it's still a testament that we, we weren't going to get out the fight. You might have punched us in the mouth, but it's still 12 rounds, and we going all the way to the very end, which last week we went to the last second, fell in our favor. This week we went to the last second, then fell in our favor. So that's the nature of the beast. Oh, I'm sorry about I'm sorry about missing that early. Sometimes get a little loquacious and go off. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's all me. I gotta listen. Thanks, guys. Thanks again. Thanks again.